Welcome. We are live from our DC Rumble studios here on this uh, Friday afternoon. Hello, everybody. Brian Glenn, as we are awaiting a press conference at Mar-a-Lago uh, with Speaker Mike Johnson and President Trump slated to start uh, in about 30 minutes. Uh, welcome. So uh, this press conference have been called a couple days ago in regards to an upcoming election integrity hearing that will take place uh, not only in the oversight committee but also on homeland security as well and as we go into this 2024 election uh still we remember what happened in 2020 and some of the discrepancies that not only did we see uh in the 2020 election but also what we experienced in the midterms and go over a few of those things uh and much much more as we go to the bottom of the hour this press conference with speaker johnson and president trump is slated to begin before we get to that i do want to talk about one of our partners for today the birch gold group uh we will talk about the economy in this broadcast this is something that is on everyone's agenda not only, not only is it the current economy, economy that we have, but also your investments in our friends at the Birch Gold Group. They are the experts in gold, silver, and precious metals. They want to show you how to secure your financial future with precious metals and gold and silver. Simply text the words TRUMP to 989898 for this free information kit they'll send it to you we've got some a team of experts that are there to answer any questions that you might have they are um, a plus rated from the better business bureau and they can certainly help you out on that so we do appreciate our friends at the birch gold group as the uncertainties continue in the market now obviously the market has done pretty well but the basis for a lot of the success is really uh not there so this correction of the market uh, is soon to come. So check out our friends of the Birch Gold Group. Text the words TRUMP to 989898. You're taking a look right now. That is a live look from Mar-a-Lago as his press conference with Speaker Johnson and President Trump is slated to start at the bottom of the hour. We'll continue to keep an eye on that. Until then, uh, we are live here in D.C. at this beautiful Rumble studio. We Special thanks to the staff here. And of course, Rumble is a great partner for right side and they have been there at a time in this company's history that we've really needed them and and to kind of unpack some programming here tomorrow uh we'll be live there in pennsylvania for president trump is scheduled to hold a rally there and we'll have extreme uh i say extreme wall-to-wall -wall coverage for that for you as well then we're going to transition over to new york uh where day one it will jury selection there in uh, the president trump's trial there uh, in uh, New York City. We'll have full coverage there. Vanessa Broussard will be live outside Trump Tower. I will be live outside the courthouse uh, where uh, several protests and support supporters are planned to be there as well. And I mentioned Rumble because I remember uh, post the 2020 election, let's kind of go back and unpack some things and, and what happened to not only the fallout of the election when we had this uh, the Biden administration coming in and completely radically changing just about everything uh, that we know in this country, from the border to the economy to foreign policy. But the 2020 election and the fallout from that also brought us this, this new age of censorship, of what you could talk about and what you can, could criticize. And of course, COVID was a part of that as well, was what you could actually say and what you could not say in regards to COVID. Well, that also applied with the election. So Rumble was right there after the election and really helped us out when other platforms decided they did not want us to question the 2020 election. They did not want us to pose any questions that we had in regards to results or some of the, the stories that were coming out. Uh, we could not say those things and when we were deplatformed from those uh, channels, Rumble was right there to uh, jump in and help us be a part of that. So Rumble truly is a special part of this network, and we are proud to have partnered up with them, and I'm proud to be in this studio here today. Uh, side note, many of you right now in the comments over the last week or so have been 
saying, what is wrong with uh, Brian's eyes? It looks, they're kind of puffy. Uh, what happened? Is he sick? Is he taking medication? Did he get stung by a thousand bees? No, that's not the answer. It is simply pollen. And if you live in the South, and of course, if you travel as much as I do, you go across this great country, and you're always in a different climate, it seems like every two, three days. This is a result of allergies and puffy eyes. So I am taking as much Claritin as humanly possible to combat that. Some days it's good, some days it's not. Uh, today, I gotta say, it's probably okay. But uh, I do appreciate the comments down in all of our chat rooms concerned about my eyes. I'm glad that that seems to be a concern of uh, many of you right now. Uh, it is 4.08 here. And if you're just now tuning in, we are live from the Rumble Studios. Now, the press conference with Speaker Johnson and President Trump is slated to begin at the bottom of the hour to go over election integrity. And now, if you kind of do a polling of what is concerning to Americans right now. Uh, it is the border, it's the economy, and it's this global threat of a, of, a, of a World War III. But always on this list has been election integrity. And have we fixed the problems that we saw in the 2020 election? Now, you can say that uh, COVID changed a lot of the ways that we were able uh, to vote. And I always say this, that they weaponized COVID to interfere with the elections. And certain voting requirements and were dropped, uh, changed. We had drop boxes that were implemented in several states. Uh, voting, voting laws were uh, un unjustly changed to fit COVID. So, uh, radically changed that were actually violated state election laws. They didn't care. They wanted to do whatever they could to maximize the opportunity during COVID to change and, and perhaps uh, hijack this election. And, and thank God that at this point, uh, we can kind of now with the evidence. Now, uh, critics out there will say that no judge, no court has ever found uh, any election violations have never been found proven in any court. And I will argue that this evidence has never been brought in front of a jury. It was always thrown out on standing. And so uh, has the courts fairly looked at the discrepancies of the 2020 election? I would argue they have not and that the evidence is there. And I remember post-2020 election, uh, Mike Lindell was a big part of kind of uncovering a lot that happened. And I remember being on a Zoom call with him and we even went live with it. I was at a hotel uh, there in Washington, D.C. And we talked about some of the things that he found and, and what happened in Pennsylvania, what happened in Michigan, Wisconsin, Georgia, uh, Arizona. Those are just the swing states. And then, of course, we saw, we saw problems across the board as well. And what they did was they, they implemented more mail-in ballots uh, due to you know public safety concerns, uh, drop boxes were implemented with no, no, well, they might've had security cameras on the drop boxes, but no one reviewed the footage of what actually went down. We had a lot of people that were mules. We, we saw the, the movie, uh, that came out about that. Uh, well, mute, these mules were dropping in numerous ballots into these drop boxes. Uh, we had absentee ballots being, um, also pumped out in the mail. And I know for a fact that even Georgia, here of recently just started getting in ballots from wait for the 2020 election so and the 2022 midterms. So they've been floating around in the postal service, probably found somewhere in a box, and then finally delivered to the election offices. So when you think about when President Trump said, go find me the votes, quite frankly, he's saying just that, go find me the votes, meaning they're out floating in la-la land, especially we can prove now that votes from the 2020 election, majority Republican votes, overwhelmingly Republican votes, were floating around for 2020, just now made it to the election offices in Georgia, and then the midterms, the same thing. This evidence uh, will become public very, very soon, and I, in my opinion, will completely clarify those statements as far as President Trump said there in Georgia. Also, ghost ballots 
ghost ballots from people who just don't exist. You got dead people on the voting roll that have voted in the 2020 election. You've also got uh, the extended deadlines that we did during the election. Prior to the election, I should say, on the early voting, I remember sitting in a hotel room in Pennsylvania and the reporter said, uh, well, by the way, you know, uh, you have until November 15th, November 10th, November 12th to get your ballot, your ballot mailed in. And I thought to myself, well, wait a minute, the election's on the 3rd. Why would someone have to the 12th or the 15th to postmark their ballot to come in to be counted? So that seemed a little odd. Once again, it's not election day, it's voting season. And I think all of these concerns from the 2020 election really uh, need to be addressed so that when we go into 2024, we don't have as many questions after the election. And on election night, we actually know who won the election. We're not sitting days or maybe a week later wondering who won this election. So we're so glad that Speaker Johnson and President Trump have come together to make this announcement that this will now be a hearing. This will be something that their oversight, Homeland Security, will look into to make sure we get ready to vote on 2024. We have addressed as many issues as possible. And that is something that not only has been done uh, right now, will, will be done, but though the last several years, there's so many organizations that have really gone out uh, to do uh, a lot of their, you know, self-funded investigations. We checked on the voting machines to see what the accuracy of those were as well. Um, and so hopefully that this hearing, this committee, will discover some new ways that we can secure our elections because that's what it's all about. We've always said, if we do not have safe and secure elections, we do not have a country. We do not have a border. We do not have a country. So we must secure both of those. And remember, after the election, if you criticized any of this, social media would shut you down. It would be flagged in the community notes that it was misinformation, that you know users would report you for, for basically pushing false uh, statements online. So that is something we need to look at. The, the, the fact that social media played a big part of this 2020 election, shutting down your voice and your opinion about the election. We'll get into more of that. It is uh, 4.15 here locally here in D.C., bottom of the hour. You've got a double look at Mar-a-Lago, where that press conference will begin here soon. I do want to talk once again about our friends over at the Birch Gold Company. The economy is a big story. Your investments are on the line. I talk to seniors every single day. Matter of fact, I talked to two today on Capitol Hill, walking through the halls that say, you know what? We've had to cut back on this. We've had to cut back on that to make ends meet because we can't survive this inflation. Our savings did not go as far as we thought. And that's because Bidenomics does not work. Secure your financial future with our friends at the Birch Gold Group. When you look at gold historically, it has done phenomenal. It has been a very safe place to put your investments. So simply text the words Trump to 989898 and get that free information kit from the Birch Gold Group. They were their A plus from Better Business Bureau. They will they will answer any questions that you might have. Uh, it may not be right for you, and we're not suggesting that you put all your investments in gold, silver, and precious metals, but the fact remains, it is a secure place to do that. And our friends at the Birch Gold Group want to help you out on that. So simply text the words Trump to 989898. Okay, so the 2020 election had all of its issues. Now let's fast forward to the 2022 midterms. Kerry Lake had a huge election for governor there that particular on that year. And I remember following that campaign from day one. We were there pretty much when she announced. We were there in Arizona for just about every event she did. I saw the momentum. I saw the crowds. I saw the support. Her messaging was on board with America first, with President Trump's agenda, and really with all the things that you and I believe in. She was on point with all of it. And then election night came. And then we saw the printer discrepancies where the ballots didn't, meant, didn't match the printer size. And so certain locations were, had to stop. They had to fix their printers, which were checked the Friday before the Tuesday election day. They worked then, but apparently on election day, they didn't work. 
So long lines formed. A lot of people got discouraged. A lot of people went on to probably, maybe they didn't vote, you know, maybe they didn't end up voting at all, or they had to drive across town to another polling center. So that election had all kinds of red flags. So we thought, you know what, here we go again, 2020 all over again in 2022. So then, then we, now we set our eyes on 2024. And, and by the way, Carrie Lake is running for Senate there in Arizona, a vital uh, Senate seat uh, for us, not only to uh, perhaps take over the majority in the Senate, but also to get another, I think, another firebrand America first uh, uh, senator in that in that chamber to fight for uh, President Trump's agenda when he does get in in 2024. So it's very vital. But it makes you think now, okay, have we resolved all of the issues from the 2020 election? Well, I would say we have done some. I know that some states have uh, rolled back some of the things they they implemented during COVID to deal with that. Drop boxes in certain states would not be allowed. They clean up their voter rolls. They've gotten rid of these ghost ballots. They've got rid of the dead people uh, ballots. The signature verification I think is being tightened up. So now we know that you know we don't have somebody in a warehouse just signing ballots willy nilly that don't match up with the signature on file. So these are things that we have to work through. And that's why it's so important right now for Speaker Johnson, and God bless him for bring, bringing this to the table and getting with President Trump today to bring this up so oversight and homeland security can get involved as well. Um, I saw a story come out a couple of days ago, and I'm going to kind of get to it right now, about social security numbers in Texas and the spike in new voter registration that was going on in Texas. Now, let me give you an example of what a typical week would be in a certain state for new voter registration. You might have a state like Vermont, might have uh, you know 75 people, new voter registration. Some states might have a 200 people that week, in any given week, uh, sign up for a new, uh, to be a new voter. But would you imagine that the state of Texas would have over 223 thousand new people registered to vote. Now that is a number that is so uncharacteristic of any other state that they would have uh, registered to vote. So it makes you wonder for a second, what is going on at the southern border and why is this border remaining wide open? And we've always had this narrative that the Democrats want nothing more than to flood our country with the illegals that will then go to parts of the country. They, by the, matter of fact, if you go to New York, I think they can. I think an illegal can vote in local city elections. But could you imagine them having the ability to vote in federal elections? Well, I think that's what's happened in Texas. In this huge spike in the week of, one of the weeks, the latter weeks of March, show over 220,000 new registered voters. Now, what they've done and it is they've gotten with organizations, the Democrats, to get Social Security numbers to these illegals. With that Social Security number, that has enabled them to register to vote. Then at that point, they can then do a mail-in ballot. They can do an absentee ballot. But without that ID... That physical ID, I don't think you could vote in person on that. But if that is, in fact, their plan, I had a breaking development go through a little bit earlier today. Uh, said this, that back in 2021, uh, there is a statement from the White House that basically makes it uh, legal for an illegal to vote and cast its vote. And that might explain why certain counties, cities, states that might have had, I'm going to give an example, if there is 10,000 residents in a county, but for whatever reason they had 15,000 people vote, that might explain the extra 5,000 people that voted in an election because these people voted they weren't citizens, you know, on the books, residents of that state or that county, but they were simply, they obtained a voter registration and able to vote. 
So that's why you see in certain states this huge, massive uh, uh, gap between who actually is registered to vote or who lives in the state, citizens that are 18 and over, that can vote, and the actual number of people who voted. This might explain it. So back, I, I, I will put this on Twitter here shortly. It just came out a few minutes ago. But that's exactly how uh, they did it in 2020. And then back in 2021, they actually made it a little bit more standardized. So it's almost like the, tw- the fix for 2024 is on. And when you look at the southern border and how open it is, and the, and the fact that you know, there is no urgency from the Biden administration to fix the southern border. It's because they're flooding it with voters. And this is how they did it back in 2021, essentially making it legal for an illegal to cast a vote in a U.S. election. Now, New York, their state and local, they can pretty much do uh, what they want to do. That is, that is on that local level. But on a federal level, we can't have that happen. And I know that people, I would, I would argue that just about everybody who's watching me right now would agree that uh, you should be a U.S. citizen to vote in our elections, that we're letting an illegal come across our border, Ill, you know, break federal law, coming into a city, getting on a plane, getting a credit card, bottled of water, and a, and a you know, you know, free airfare in a room somewhere, and we're putting them up on your tax dollars. And by the way, they're going to be able to vote in the next election to tell you what what to do. It it, it is absurd, and it's it's really disgusting that this is what's happening right now. But that's the state of our country. And as we cover just about everything that President Trump does, I often ask every single person I come up to, what should President Trump do on first day of his of this new administration? And they all say, easy, close the border, because that is what's destroying our country. That is what not only is destroying our country crime-wise, this migrant crime that's going on across various cities in this country, but the amount of drugs that's pouring in, the more the violence that's pouring across the border. But also now we got votes. So think about this. Every time you see video of, 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 of a big, you know, massive amounts of people coming across, we saw what they did in El Paso, basically, you know, kind of bum rushing the, uh, the gate there with the, with the border security and the, and, the, and the National Guard there, the Texas National Guard. Those are voters. And we think, I have an idea of, of what they're, how they're going to vote. So I just ask you, to call your congressman wherever you live and demand to put pressure on them in the House, in the Senate, and pressure them to go and close the border. Because not only are we losing our country, but we're also going to lose it on the, as far as crime and drugs, killing 300 Americans every day. But we're also uh, in a time where we could lose this election. All right, it is 426. You got a live look right now at Mar a Lago that looks like that is the living room area um, where we had a press conference, um, I think last month in that room. Uh, the president and Speaker Johnson is scheduled to walk out at 430, just the bottom of the hour here locally on the East Coast. So, We'll keep an eye on that. And when as soon, as soon as that happens, we'll we'll dip out of this and go directly uh, into that. Uh, but programming note, we are live in Pennsylvania tomorrow. Uh, Vanessa Broussard and myself will give you coverage of that rally. I would imagine uh, a lot to, to talk about with President Trump. It seems like every week there's a lot for him to talk about, not only what's going on in the courts, but what's also going on in this country. Also, uh, you know, you take a look at the situation where you've got the, the court proceedings in New York and all of these lawsuits, and and it seems like, you know, we have seen small victories uh, come up over the last couple of weeks. We've got, you know, reduced bail. And when you think about this for a second, this, this ridiculous, uh, you know, was it almost a half a billion dollars that, uh, that President Trump faced from one of those lawsuits— Compare that to, remember the uh, Palestine, the, the train derailment that basically terrorized and destroyed an entire city there uh, and, and tainted the water supply and, and, and really killed the local economy there 
Uh, a lot of people getting sick from it, had to move out, uh, job, work, dis, you know, work disruptions. Well, just recently, a penalty was handed out in regards to that. And that was not much less than what they hit President Trump for. So think about that for a second. A train can derail, destroy a small town, force people to basically move and up, you know, kind of up. Uh, root their life and go somewhere else, uh, make people sick. And that is not as bad in the eyes of the legal system as what President Trump did with the whole uh, um, uh, Mar-a-Lago situation. It, it just seems to me uh, th- there was no victim in that, in that lawsuit. There was, no, there was nobody hurt. The banks uh, were repaid their, their, you know, got their loans repaid to them. Uh, there was no victim in it. And the banks even said if they were to redo those loans or right now, they would do them as we, as we speak. So just a, a radical injustice there. Once again, if you haven't text the words Trump to 989898, I do uh, check out our friends over at the Birch Gold Group. We're going to talk about the economy here in a second and inflation and what we've seen across the board for that. But they are the experts in gold, silver, precious metals. Just simply text the words Trump to 989898. Get that free information kit. You can make the decision yourself. If you've got any questions, they have a very knowledgeable staff, an A-plus rated from the Better Business Bureau. They can certainly uh, help you on that. So text the words Trump to 989898. Okay, so let's take a look at the economy right now. Um this past week, if you noticed a couple days ago, it was with President Trump in Atlanta. We made a special stop before he went to the fundraiser. I uh, went to Chick-fil-A, great Georgia franchise. I dubbed it the uh, Lord's Chicken, which uh, President Trump seemed to like that as well. Uh, but it was on the campus of a pretty much an all-black college uh, right there in Atlanta. So inside the Chick-fil-A was overwhelming uh, African-American students and workers there. And I got to hear firsthand the, the sincerity from them as far as what they're battling in the real world, and that is inflation. That is, I say a lot of times that gas is the lowest hanging fruit when it comes to talking about the economy because it pretty much affects everyone. Now, on Trump's last day in office, I believe gas was about 188, 189, well under two dollars a gallon. I uh, know certain states it might have even been less than that. You can deep south, and then of course it went up to well over five, six, seven dollars a gallon as as it speaks now. Uh, it has slightly come down, but in the process, Joe Biden has diluted our petroleum oil reserves, which is meant for times of war natural disasters or any type of shipping disruption. So that's made for that. It's not made to artificially lower the price of gasoline and dilute the market with oil. That's not what it's for, but that's what he used it for. So it has brought down uh, gas prices slightly. But if you look at everything else, Joe Biden wants you to think that your inflationary rate's around 3% which you and I both know is garbage, complete garbage. The real inflationary rate, the ones that affect you and I every day on food, house, energy, lodging, uh, in, not only to um, also to um, you know interest rates to buy a home, a car, things like that, it's much, much higher. So um, let's take a look at food. We're looking at an inflationary rate around 27% for food. Food alone, and a lot of people, I said this earlier, a lot of seniors, I think it was 22% of seniors, so just over one out of five seniors said that they have delayed or canceled a meal or meals during the week so that they can pay for the rent, uh, medication, things like that. So people are eating less because of the inflationary rate. Now you look at electricity, we just came off of a, a relatively mild winter outside the uh, ridiculous uh, cold temperatures we have for the Iowa caucus, which by the way, it was a cold Iowa caucus in history of the caucus, negative 47 degrees. Uh, but it was relatively warm than normal. So now we're going to go into summer and summer is expected to be 
hotter than average, especially uh, through most of the South and the West and the South, which means our energy prices and our demand on the grid is going to be more than normal. So with food up and electricity, your heating, your electricity is up uh, around 18% on that. We're all faced with higher than normal electric bills this summer. And so once again, that's going to really uh, bite into a lot of people's weekly and monthly budgets for that. Now go into rent. Uh, a survey came out about a week ago that says for the first time in a long time, the average income needed to buy the average priced house in this country is just about over $106,000. Uh, so you need a six-figure salary to afford to buy the average priced home in this country. Now, not only is that due to, I think, an extreme shortage in inventory, which is, has kind of pushed up the uh, average uh, housing cost, but also you look at interest rates. Many of you watch this right now, and you've probably got some mortgage people watch this right now, and we, I'd like to get your thoughts on this. You can uh, drop me an email, uh, go to our website, you can do that. Um, but interest rates are just about double right now than they were under the Trump administration. So it takes more money to buy the average house now than it did back in the Trump administration. So uh, when you have an interest rate at three, four, five, even maybe even 6% versus now, uh, more of the eight, nine percent, seven, eight, nine, you probably can get one in the, in the, in the low sevens. Uh, that might be something uh, that I'm just taking a look at the double box here. Just getting a mic check there. Wonderful. All right. Uh, so when you, when, you, when you think about the money that it takes to buy the house, that is really kind of uh, done away with a lot of our younger people trying to live the American dream of getting out of college and buying a house. And with, uh, you know, stagflation right now and, and, and earnings are down. And as far as salaries, they can't afford these houses. Now you look at cars, used cars are up 21%. New cars are up as well. Interest rates on both new and pre-owned cars are up. So it's costing you more to live in your house. It's costing you more to drive your car. It's costing you more to insure your car as well. And it's costing more to fill it up with gasoline. So this has affected everyone. And for the Biden administration to sit there and tell us that the economy is okay, that inflation is, is low, is a lie. And they also will tell you that unemployment is low almost like 3%, 2%, 3%. I think that is misleading. I think they're basically, there's a lot of people in the market that has that has dropped out from even looking for jobs any longer. Uh, so that's not being reported or what's called underemployed. Now, underemployed are people that normally would have had a job before COVID that uh, that matched up to their skill set, that matched up to what their income level was, that matched up to you know where they should be in regards to that. But post COVID, you know, we look at what COVID did to this country. It eliminated a lot of jobs, and it forced people out of this corporate structure. It kind of forced them at home, and more people started working from home for in due of you know health concerns. And a lot of people were, were really slow to go back to the office and get in that traditional work structure. So with the pullback in COVID or the pullback in business with COVID, so did the jobs and so did the salary. So a lot of people right now are underemployed. They don't necessarily have that job they had before COVID because they were laid off. And now they're just getting pretty much whatever they can take right now or maybe working two or three jobs. Uh, so that has been a major fallout. So you've got unemployment, you've got inflation. Uh, and, and if you look at what happened in California on April 1st, this law, this was voted in uh, back last year, but it took place on April 1st, this $20 an hour minimum wage uh, for fast food workers working at a place that have 60 or more uh, locations. Now that what that does, that does eliminate a lot of the mom and pop places. So those guys aren't getting hit like that. 
But if you are a McDonald's or you're a, a bigger fast food franchise, you are getting hit with this $20 an hour minimum wage. And so many Democrats will, will even argue that it needs to be even higher than that. We had a, a Democrat on the Hill last week suggest it should be $50 an hour. So, and I just ask you, I don't know what that product looks like from a consumer standpoint if we're paying $50 an hour for it. So that Happy Meal all of a sudden becomes, well, not so happy. Uh, that combo meal you get, that's normally $6.99, $7, $7.50, is now $11, $12, $13, $14. Uh, it's going to price a lot of people out of the market for that product. And I said this, and this is just my theory on it, and you may agree or disagree, and you can actually uh, find me on X, Facebook, and also Instagram, at Brian Glenn TV. Drop me a line if you agree with me. Drop me a direct message, rather. I think this push for $20 an hour minimum wage is meant to drive the demand to replace the worker with robots, with AI, with computers, with technology, because it's much, much cheaper to invest in an, automatic, in an automated system initially and pay for that and replace the worker that you have to do health insurance, benefits, workers' comp, and all the expenses associated with employing a human being. You can replace that with a robot. Now, how do you do that? Well, you make it so expensive that it is, it's too expensive to hire the person. So you might as well invest in automation. And so we have this world of automation that's coming onto us that's being forced through a higher minimum wage. Now, where are those? Where is this technology being created to replace the American fast food worker? It's in California. So essentially, the state of California, you might think, well, they're, they're losing um, money from workers, work paying into the system. But guess what? They're also making money on the companies that are inventing this technology to replace the worker. It stays in the state, uh, but it will force uh, fast food workers and people to exit California and make their way over to other states. Uh, you know, I would say the, the quickest thing or the, the one that's lo they're likely to go to right now is the state of Arizona and in the Las Vegas area where all the uh, kind of a, the restaurant and entertainment hubs are right there. So you're going to see more people, even though they're getting paid 20 plus dollars an hour, uh, they still can't afford to live in these states with the taxes, so they're going to come across the border. Uh, it is 4.40 here local time. Uh, it's a double, that's a double box look live at Mar-a-Lago. Uh, beginning, uh, just an update on this on my phone. It looks like they have pushed that likely to around 5 o'clock is what I'm hearing for that. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. We're so glad you're joining us. If you are just now joining us, welcome. I'm live here in our DC Rumble studios. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, on this uh, Friday afternoon. Uh, Rumble's been a great uh, partner of Right Side, and I'm very honored to be here today. Beautiful studio. I'll do some behind-the-scenes pictures and videos uh, after this is over, so make sure you follow me on X, Facebook, and Instagram on that, and I'll put up some of that content on here because it is a great studio, and I'm looking forward to doing more engagement in this studio to kind of give you what's going on as uh, Speaker Johnson and President Trump has teamed up to announce today this uh, election integrity uh, committee that will, this discussion rather, um, I call it a hearing, that will take place in the oversight and homeland security to kind of go over some of the discrepancies that we saw back in 2020. And we were recapping some of those at the top of the show. And we all know the fallout of 2020. I know exactly where I was at um, the first day of election day on 2020. It was one of those things where... Um, you know, uh, I was leaving Grand Rapids, Michigan. We had just wrapped up a rally there, and I was making way back to Texas. And I remember seeing a very high-profile social media influencer in the lobby, and I asked him, "What do you think about what do you think about the election tonight? What do you, what, 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 what do you think happens?" He goes, "Well, we got the support, we got the policies, we got the right person, but I, they're going to try to steal it." And that was one of the first times that someone had really, that, that thought had really entered my mind 
about how they were going to do it. And of course, we were battling the fallout from COVID and all of the restrictions on that. Uh, we were battling this, this, this change in everything from election day to election season. And if you don't want to cast your ballot in person, you can drop it in a box. No ID needed, no signature verification needed. It doesn't matter. Just drop it in a box. If you need a mail-in ballot or absentee ballot, it goes out to everyone. So the market got flooded with ballots. We could drop a ballot in any box that you want it. Uh, it really got willy-nilly. And the, the, the sense of control that you can monitor your elections completely went away. And then we all saw what happened in the middle of the night in certain states. We had a water main break. We had to quickly evacuate the building, except for a couple people who pulled you know, crates of ballots out and started shoving them in the uh, counter there. Uh, that happened. You had people that would put up, you know, plywood to block the poll watchers from watching what was going on. I mean, think about that for a second. You've got people that have registered to watch the elections that have been trained to watch the ballots and watch them be counted and make sure that there's nothing out of the ordinary goes on. These people are watching, and all of a sudden, election officials that work in these locations put up plywood in the windows to block any type of monitoring from the outside. Now, you tell me if that doesn't scream what the hell was going on. And at the time, people were reporting it. And if you remember, social media was very, very quick to flag any type of election reporting questions, um, discrepancies. They would flag it as misinformation. And we saw exactly what Zuckerberg did on Facebook. And in the state of Wisconsin, they just voted down last week, the ability for private companies to pump money into public elections. It's no longer allowed. And that's what they did. Zuckerberg, Facebook, and I remember covering this just days after the election, put hundreds of millions of dollars into the U.S. elections, and the majority, and when I say majority, pretty much 99% of it went to Democrat stronghold areas. It wasn't trying to improve the access to voting in Republican districts. It was all in Democrat-based districts. So thank God the people of Wisconsin said, we don't want that in our elections, and they voted it out this couple weeks ago. So that's gone. But that's what happened in this country. We had ballots being dropped. We had mules that would go around, and we even had 2,000 mules. We even had that film. That Dines de Soja was a great documentary about this. So all of these things happened. And if anyone with an ounce of common sense would question any of it, they would get shut down on social media. They would get called an election denier. They got called, you know, uh, an extreme QAnon, or you can just fill in the blank. But that's what we were accused of. And if you go back and you listen in 2015 and 2016, the Democrats were open about how vulnerable voting machines were. There's clip after clip. There's montage after montage of all of them saying they cannot be trusted. They can be compromised. They can connect to the internet. They said all of these things, and they were screaming from the mountaintop that these things were absolutely bad for our elections. Well, guess what happened? 2020, the same thing happened. And when anybody questioned this election process or any element in the voting process, they were labeled conspiracy theory and they were taken down. There's people out there right now, and you're probably watching me, that your social media was banned, you were put on uh, restriction, you were shut down for a week because of your outspoken opinion on the election. Well, hopefully in 2024, this next election, especially with the Elon Musk you know, acquisition of Twitter, X, then if there is any questions... In this election, at least we have one social media outlet that we can absolutely feel safe that if you see something, you say something. Aren't we always told that? 
Remember after 9-11, if you see something, say something. And it, it really encouraged people to, 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 if you saw anything out of the ordinary, and this was all related to terrorism, that it was good to, if you see something, say something. But in the election, if you see something, you better not say anything because we're going to shut you down. And if you criticize anything that we do, we're going to shut you down. We're going to make sure you don't have a voice. Well, hopefully, with this committee and the changes that we've made since 2020, hopefully, we can feel safe going into it again. 48 minutes past the hour, about 12 minutes out from what I've been told uh, with this press conference between Speaker Johnson and President Trump. Double box, you're taking a look at it uh, right now. I do want to talk about our friends of the Birch Gold Group. We talk about the economy Gold, silver, precious metals, they are the experts in it. Do not let this Bidenomics, this willy-nilly shoot from your hip, no plan. You look at inflation, you've seen seniors have to go out and really dip in their savings to make sure they can make ends meet, even make get their next meal. Don't let that happen to you. If you're in a position to transition from a traditional IRA into a gold-backed IRA, the Birch Gold Group can help you with that. Text the words Trump to 989898 for that free information kit and let you make your own decision. It may not be good for everyone, and I don't, I don't think they're telling you should put it all in one basket. That would be foolish. But you do need to invest in gold, silver, precious metals. Our friends of the Birch Gold Group can do just that. Text the words Trump to 989898. Now, if you remember after the 2020 election, we got into the midterms. I mean, we thought, well, surely, surely we've caught them. They're not going to try and do anything in the midterms that they did in 2020, that the big red wave is coming. And, of course, we had some great candidates. Uh, just, you know, I think probably the most notable one would be Carrie Lake running for governor in Arizona. Pivotal race, uh, basically a termed-out governor. Katie Hobbs, Democrat, was her opponent. Uh, Katie Hobbs for the most part, was not even on the campaign trail. And we were at just about every Carrie Lake event there was. I don't care if she met with five people or 5,000 people, and I've seen it all. The crowds were there. The support was there. But then when Election Day came, we started seeing the same type of drama unfolding on Election Day, the same type of discrepancies, the same type of, oh, what, I don't know how this printer broke. I don't know why this ballot's not feeding in. Wait, this you can't vote here. You've got to go to another location. We saw all of this happening right in front of us, and I refuse to believe that Katie Hobbs legitimately won that election. There is absolutely no way. And I will say this, the same thing. You know, I was with, I think I've been to just about every Trump rally from about mid-2019 uh, up until now, which he did about 36 post the election. I have never seen the crowds be as big at that, at that moment. Joe Biden could not draw a crowd at Waffle House if he's giving away free coffee. He could not fill a middle school gymnasium in hula hoops. They were all standing six feet apart in hula hoops. The, the, the support was not there for Joe Biden. Meanwhile, President Trump is filling up arenas. President Trump is filling up airport fields, runways, tens of thousands of people screaming, lining the streets wherever he goes. Joe Biden... Not so much. So when the election happened, you have to ask yourself, what happened? What, how in the world does Joe Biden get more votes than President Trump? It's impossible. It's impossible. We know exactly how many discrepancies we had. And, and, and thank goodness, I feel like in each of those states, they have done something to uh, correct uh, some of those procedures that were put in place because of COVID. So as we go forward to 2024 and alongside this uh, committee that they'll be discussing election integrity, that some of those questions and some of those things that may not have been answered have been resolved. And so Speaker Johnson, President Trump, uh, in regards to the Homeland Security and the Oversight Committee, some of that will uh, be taken care of. Um, so 
it's about 4.52. I was just checking some notes to make sure that we're, we're on time there. Double box there, a live look at Mar-a-Lago on that. Um, one of the things that has really been on Americans' minds, so when I go out to these rallies, I talk to all the supporters, and they say, look, the border should be the number one issue that President Trump addresses on day one. Close the border. It's, we all know the fallout from the border, right? And we kind of know now uh, one of the reasons why they have let so many people come into this country is because they're trying to register as much as many Democrats as they can. And we've seen the footage on the border. We've seen Bill Malusian of Fox News ask people, you know, they, they've asked people, why are you coming over here? Who told you to come? Who are you going to vote for? They're not saying President Trump. They're saying Joe Biden. That's who told them to come. So you have to say, okay, well, if he's coming over here, and they say they're going to vote for Joe Biden, and that's probably what the Democrats are going to make sure that they're able to do. And by this latest report of these social security numbers that have been issued out to these illegals without any proof of ID, they've been issued social security numbers to register to vote. And in Texas to have, just checking the total, over 220,000 new registered voters in one week. Now, if you say, Brian, that Texas is a big state. Okay, that doesn't surprise me. So what does the other states look like? Well, states like California, New Mexico, Florida, Vermont, New Hampshire, South Carolina, they may only have a couple hundred new voters in a week register. But Texas has over 220,000. That tells me that they are registering illegals to vote in this country. And if you look at the margin of victory between Ted Cruz and and Beto O'Rourke, oh Beto there, it was not that much. A couple hundred thousand votes separated that Senate race. President Trump, 600 plus thousand votes separated Biden from a Trump, uh, from Trump's votes. So their attempt to flip Texas is very realistic in this. If indeed this report is accurate, and I don't know, I can't find any other reason why. Uh, a, 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 a documented registered number of new voters in Texas, you know, put out by, you know, an agency uh, would lie on this. So if that is true and you're able to convert a percentage of people uh, to vote for Democrats in the election, Texas, and, and that's someone who has a residence in Texas, when they, we, they used to say Texas is purple, and I'd say there's no way it's purple. No way. Well, the amount of people coming in that are able to vote in this next election, I think it's safe to say that Texas could be purple. And I think the narrative that they want you to think it's purple now, even though it's red, they want you to think it's purple so that when they are able to flip the votes with this illegal votes essentially coming into Texas, they make you say, well, they did say it was purple. So I guess now it's the Democrats took control. It's, 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 they're setting you up for it. They're getting your mind set that it's not completely red, 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 that it's right there on the verge so that when they are able to flip the election, it's less surprising that it went from a purple to a blue but if the narrative was never put out there that it was purple and you thought it was red, that's a little bit more surprising. So it's kind of a psychological game they're playing with you to get your mind prepared for this uh, possible inevitable split. Let me know your thoughts on that. You can always hit me up on my email at brian at um, uh, right side, uh, rsbn.tv, brian at rsbn.tv. You can follow me on X, Instagram, Facebook at Brian Glenn TV. Uh, you can follow me on True Social, which is wonderful. And I love all the news that's been coming out on True Social at Brian on True Social. Uh, programming note we will be live in Pennsylvania on Saturday. It'll be tomorrow. We'll also be live in New York City for day one of one of the trials for President Trump. I'll be in front of the courthouse there. I know there's some several organizations have come out and uh, advertise that they will be there to support President Trump, as you would imagine. Uh, but on the flip side of that, uh, it's it's one of the most vicious places uh, to go if you are a Trump supporter. And I know that every time we go live uh, from New York City, you never know what you're going to see. 
uh, or here. So uh, I definitely encourage you to tune in. We'll be live Monday at 9 a.m. Um, Eastern time. Okay, it's three minutes top the top of the hour. I've just been told we are still tracking at 5 p.m. Eastern. So really any minute, Speaker Johnson and President Trump will take the stage there uh, at Mar-a-Lago to talk about this election integrity uh, committee that will be discussed on Homeland and also on the Oversight Committee. Uh, lots going on here in Washington, D.C. Uh, obviously, we've got a very slim majority in the House, uh, and it seems like you know every single vote absolutely counts, uh, and every vote is really sacred at this point. We don't have a huge uh, amount of uh, discrepancy there on these votes. So when we get down to issues like you know the border, uh, budgets, things like that, uh, Republicans really do need to be uh, in the same. Uh, lockstep on everything like that to get things done. And that's why it's so crucial that we maintain the House. And many of you might know this, and if some of you don't, uh, this will surprise you. Whoever controls the House in January of 2025 will essentially be able to write the tax codes. Now, right now, the Trump tax codes are, are, are you know, planned to sunset uh, that month. So whoever's in control of the House in January 2025 will rewrite the tax codes. And of course, the Democrats have been open about this. They want you to pay more taxes. They absolutely want you to pay more taxes. So if we don't maintain the majority in the House, that means coming up next year, uh, we all could not only be facing increasing inflationary rates on products, goods, and services, but you could be paid more taxes. So that's why it's important that we you know, maintain the quality or the control of the majority, I should say, in the House. And of course, when you take back the Senate, that's why every Senate race right now is extremely important. And that's why the Senate race in, in uh, Arizona is important. We must make sure that we pick up that seat and, and, and get the majority in the Senate. Or, or really, things just stop. Uh, I know we have the articles of impeachment on Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, uh, Margie Taylor Greene, that's her impeachment, articles of impeachment, that she got to the floor for a vote that, that passed. Uh, they were planning to walk it this week over to the Senate, and, and uh, Senate Republicans uh, requested more time to put together so that they can adequately get that uh, to some type of trial there in the Senate. I don't, you know, don't really know what Schumer has planned for that. Probably going to do a one-day trial on it, or maybe just take it to a vote where it was likely uh, going to fail uh, there. So it won't necessarily, I don't anticipate it being uh, passed or in the Senate, but it's more symbolic of what America feels. And, and I think that's really what, why are some of you right now are so frustrated. And I would imagine I'll read the comments uh, after this uh, broadcast is over to kind of get some feedback, but let me know what you think right now. And you drop in the comments on Rumble uh, down below. But it feels like Republicans haven't had a lot of wins. We're not putting points on the board. We're not scoring anything. We're not moving the ball enough. And it seems like the only thing we've had to, to kind of do a victory lap is on the fact that we did impeach Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas on the reckless uh, address at the border. Those are points on the board. But what they've been also been doing an oversight of all the Hunter Biden Joe Biden, you know, crime family, the LLCs, the SARS reports, all the things that have been discovered uh, through these investigations that show these shell companies and these relations to these foreign entities and money were flowing into shell companies and they were going to uh, people in the Biden family and then all of a sudden the shell companies would close down and it was this repetitive motion. This, 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 they, they had this plan in place. And the fact they've been doing this for years, even they were doing it under the Trump administration. We have all this evidence Then Tony Bobolinsky sat in front of the oversight committee for uh, damn nearly eight hours telling us what happened and what he expected. And the big guy, we always heard about the big guy with, with, with Joe Biden and, and his conversations with Ukrainian officials in China. And we have all this mountain of evidence but we have still not seen anything brought to the floor for a vote. 
And so I, once again, the, the, the power to get things done, believe it or not, are, are in your hands. And I encourage you to call your congressman and request that they put this thing to the floor for a vote. They can do what's called a whip check. Now, what a whip check is, they, they can put this bill, and Speaker Johnson has the ability to do that, put it to the floor for, the, for a vote, okay, and make members put their name on it. Make them vote either way. Do you support impeaching Joe Biden? And you either say yes or you say no. But we want to see where they stand on it. That's the only way we can do it. That's the only way we can really figure out if if things if, if we have the right people in place and we're moving in the right direction. Because House Republicans are frustrated. You guys watching at home, I know you're frustrated. I know you are. You tell me you are. I see it on my social media. I see it in direct messages. I see you in person. You're frustrated that we're not doing enough in the House to hold anyone accountable. And I'm with you. And I think we do need to put some more pressure on that. Now, he hear me out on this. Chances are you can impeach Joe Biden in the House. We know it's not going anywhere in the Senate. So that's going to fall flat. So it, it, it becomes almost symbolic of just doing something and holding someone accountable. Republicans voters want someone accountable for what's happened. The weaponization of the Department of Justice against Donald J. Trump is hideous. They have absolutely weaponized things against this president, against people on January the 6th. There's people, there's a grandmother just here recently, last week, went into the Capitol for 10 minutes to pray. 10 minutes, went in the Capitol, prayed, walked out. Well, guess what? She just wrapped up nine days on trial, and she is facing four to five years in prison. That's right. Four to five years in prison for going to the Capitol and praying. Meanwhile, violent criminals, people that have, a, that have you know, burned down uh, you know, stores and, and cities and, and, and burned down and looted and riot and, and, and beat up people on, on, for, for Black Lives Matter and the Antifa and all the riots that happened around there. Heck, you, and I remember the day for, when, when Trump was inaugurated in 2016, what happened just outside the White House. Those people are never held accountable. They never serve a day in jail. That's not the case for somebody on January 6th. They have unfairly uh, been prosecuted. And we all know that. We've all seen the story. There's people sitting right now, uh, not too far from this, this studio, that have not seen a day on trial, and they've been sitting in jail for years. And that is a shame, but that is a political prisoner and uh, that should not be happening in this country. It should not be happening. Uh, 505 here locally. The, any moment, I've been told uh, you're taking a live look right now, double box at Mar-a-Lago. Any moment, uh, Speaker Johnson and President Trump should uh, step in front of the microphone. Uh, I've been told it's going to last about 30 minutes. I don't know if they're going to take any questions from reporters in the room, but if not, if they do, we'll certainly uh, be able to hear that as well. As a reminder, you can follow us on all of our social media platforms on Twitter, on X, on Instagram. You can follow me as well at Brian Glenn TV. Once again, you can send me an email if you have a question about anything, uh, Brian at Brian.Glenn. I should repeat that, Brian.Glenn at RSBN.TV. That's Brian.Glenn at RSBN TV. Uh, certainly subscribe to us. If you're not watching us on Rumble, go to Rumble right now. It's an honor to have you at Mar-a-Lago, my $18 million house on the ocean and the bay. And uh, it's one of the problems we have. We have a, a court system that's very corrupt. We have a border that's open. We have a lot of problems in our country. And uh, we have an election problem, and that's really what we're here to talk about today. Speaker Johnson's going to be uh, briefing you on what we discussed, what we agree on. But uh, I would like to demand that our border be closed because we have millions of people coming into our country. Millions and millions of people are pouring in at levels that nobody's reporting, nobody's going to talk about. But I believe you could have 15 million already in. Some are terrorists. They come from... Uh, jails and prisons. They come from mental institutions and insane asylums. They come from all over the world, not just South America. They're coming from all over the world. Venezuela announced that their crime is down 67 percent 
because of the fact that they've taken the gang members, the leaders and the members, and they've deposited them very nicely into the United States of America. That's just Venezuela. Uh, it's happening with the Congo. It's happening with countries all over Africa, Asia, South America, all over the world it's happening. Our country is like a dumping ground, and we're going to have it stopped. And Biden should do it immediately. He should close the border immediately. He needs no legislation. He doesn't need this gentleman. He doesn't need anybody. He can do it. I did it without any legislation. I had the best border we've had in ever recorded history. He can close it immediately. If he would have left, we, we had stay in Mexico, remain in Mexico. We had catch and release in Mexico, not here. We had everything. It was perfect. It was a great a great situation we had, and now we have the worst ever. I don't believe in the history of the world there's been a border like this. But we probably have 15 million people, and they come from places that you don't want to know about, and they're going to be big problems, and it's getting worse. It's migrant crime. It's a new category of crime, migrant crime. And I'm just demanding, I just demand, as a citizen, I demand the border has to be closed. Our country cannot take it. No country could take it. It's not sustainable by any country. And uh, we want to also mention election interference, and we want to talk about election integrity for a little while. But basically, that's what we're working on. And uh, I'll introduce the speaker, who you know very well. He's doing a, a really good job under very tough circumstances. And I appreciate he came to Mar-a-Lago. We have a great conference. And there's a big turnout because people want this to be healed. They want our country to be healed. They want our country to be united. And I think most people are united on the fact that they don't want people pouring in from prisons and jails and mental institutions. They don't want that to happen. They don't want it to take place. And it's not going to happen for long. And that's why I say that November 5th is going to be the most important day in the history of our country. That's the election. It's going to be the most important day in the history of our country. Thank you very much. And, Speaker, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. President, and it's good to see you all. Uh, we're so uh, delighted to be here with our former and future president uh, in this beautiful facility. Mar-a-Lago is famous around the country, and we're uh, grateful to be here. Uh, the, the, with President Trump as our nominee in the party, we are very much looking forward to that historic day in November because we are going to grow the House majority, we're going to win the United States Senate, and we're going to win back the White House as well. The American people need us to do that. They're excited for that day, and November cannot get here soon enough. Uh, the Speaker of the House, when we're not in session, uh, the Speaker is required to go around, fly around the country, and be with all of our candidates and incumbents all around. Uh, I've been to think, 23 states now in the last several weeks, and everywhere we go, one of the first questions that people ask about is this issue of election integrity. The border is the number one issue in America. There's never been a political issue uh, that, that scored so high in the polls as a matter of concern. And it doesn't matter where anyone lives, because as we say now, every state is a border state. Uh, they're deeply concerned about that. And election integrity is tied to border the lack of border security. President Biden has created a catastrophe, and he did it by design. We documented 64 specific executive actions that he took from the day he walked into the Oval Office and that his agencies took under Secretary Mayorkas to open the border wide, to invite everybody from around the world to come here, including hardened criminals and dangerous persons. And the result, we all know. The official number is 9 million encounters at the southern border alone just since Joe Biden took office. But the actual number is probably close to 16 million illegals who have come into the country because they desired it. They designed it. They engineered it to be that way. His actions did that. He, he ended the uh, Remain in Mexico policy under President Trump's administration. They reinstated catch and release that had uh, been uh, practiced under the Obama administration. They, they stopped building the wall. They did everything exactly the opposite of what this president had achieved. And that's why we have this catastrophe. It has all sorts of terrible effects on the American people. We know that fentanyl is the leading cause of death for Americans age 18 to 49. We know that violent crimes are being committed on innocent Americans now, Lake and Riley and many others. We're now losing their lives because these dangerous people are in our country, and it must stop. And the American people are demanding that it does. And it doesn't matter which political party that any American is in. They have the same desire. They want safety and security, and we can supply that. But among the problems that flows from this open border catastrophe 
is directly related to this threat to our election integrity. Why is that? You need to understand something really important about federal law. Since 1993, the, the, the National Voter Registration Act, we call it the, the Motor Voter Law, allows people to sign up to vote when they get a driver's license. Uh, if an individual only asserts or simply states that they are a citizen, they don't have to prove it. They can register that person to vote in a federal election. And you see states are currently prohibited Believe it or not, the states are prohibited from asking someone to prove that they're a citizen. It, it, the, the federal voter registration form just has a check a box, and if you do that, you're good. The states can't allow it. Well, we think that's a serious problem. And so what we're going to do is the House Republicans are introducing a bill that will require proof of citizenship to vote. It, it seems like common sense. I'm sure all of us would agree we only want U.S. citizens to vote in U.S. elections. But there are some Democrats who don't want to do that. Uh, we believe that one of their designs, one of the reasons for this open border, which everybody asks all around the country, why would they do this? Why would they allow all this chaos? Why the violence? Because they want to turn these people into voters. Right now, the administration is encouraging illegals to go to their local welfare office to sign up for benefits. Well, guess what? When you go to a, a welfare office, they also ask you if you would like to register to vote. And so many people, we think, are going to do that. And you know what? It, the numbers are so high. There's so many millions of illegals in the country that if only one out of a hundred voted, they would cast potentially hundreds of thousands of votes in the election. That could turn an election. This, this could be a, a tight election in, in our congressional races around the country. It could, if there are enough votes, affect the presidential election. And so that's why House Republicans are going to act. I'm, I'm going to announce to you today uh, here standing alongside President Trump, that we will do everything within our power to ensure that we do have free and fair elections in this country. If we don't have that in a constitutional republic, we have nothing. It's the basis of who we are as a nation, and we owe that to the American people. And so what we're going to do is introduce legislation to require that every single person who registers to vote in a federal election must prove that they're an American citizen first. They have to prove it. That will be a new uh, uh, part of the federal law and a very important one. Our bill will establish new safeguards. It'll put us on par, by the way, with virtually every other democracy around the world that also prohibits non-citizen voting. And, and this is a, a, a critical thing for us to do at a, at a very critical time. Our bill also will require states to remove non-citizens from their existing voter rolls. That's a big problem too. And, and it will provide access to databases from the Department of Homeland Security and the Social Security Administration to help the states administer this. At, 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 as the entity that is responsible for regulating federal elections, Congress has this responsibility. We cannot wait for widespread fraud to occur, uh, to occur uh, especially when the threat of fraud is growing with every single illegal immigrant that crosses that border. This is something most Americans are deeply concerned about. The latest poll says 78% of the Americans who are polled say that preventing illegal immigrants from voting in our elections is a top priority. I've, in every place I've gone around the country, whether it's out west, midwest, Long Island, deep south, it doesn't matter, everybody is concerned about this. We have a job to do. Here's what you need to look for, and I'll turn it back to the president. When we put this bill on the floor, you're gonna see a record vote by Republicans and Democrats. You'll see that the Republicans stand for election integrity. And then we'll be able to ask this very important question of the Democrats. They're gonna have to go on record do you believe the, the, that Americans and Americans alone should be the ones who vote in American elections? We're about to find out their answer. And I think that will be a very interesting one uh, for, for everybody to see. Mr. President, thank you again for uh, hosting us today. I'll turn it back thank to you. you very much. Yes, thank sir. You. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, do you have any questions? <laughs> We're getting along very well with the speaker, and I get along very well with Marjorie. Uh, we have a speaker. Uh, he was voted in, and it was a complicated process, and uh, I think very uh, — it's not, uh, not an easy situation for any speaker. I think he's doing a very good job. He's doing uh, about as good as you're going to do, and uh, I'm sure that Marjorie understands that. She's a very good friend of mine, and I know she has a lot of respect for the speaker.
We're looking at it right now, and they're talking about it, and we're thinking about making it in the form of a loan instead of just a gift. We keep handing out gifts of billions and billions of dollars, and we'll take a look at it. But much more importantly to me is the fact that Europe has to step up and they have to give money. We, they have to equalize. If they don't equalize, I'm very upset about it because they're affected much more than we are. The Ukraine situation would have never happened if I was president, would have never, ever happened. And everybody says that, including Democrats, that it happened to such an outrage. People, millions of people are dead right now, both sides. Millions of people are dead. Uh, cities are blown to ashes. You'll never rebuild those cities. That's certainly not like they were so beautiful. And this is something should have never happened. October 7th should have never happened in Israel. Should have never happened. What happened there was outrageous. Iran was broke when I was president. People weren't buying oil from Iran. They weren't allowed to. If they were going to buy oil from Iran, then they weren't going to do any business in the U.S. And I said it to China. I said it to everybody. They weren't doing business. They were broke. They didn't have money for Hamas. They didn't have money for Hezbollah. It would have never happened. October 7th would have never happened. It did happen. And now it's a disaster. And it's only getting worse. So uh, it's, uh, it's very sad. No, I stand with the speaker. We've had a very good relationship. <laughs> Because we don't need it any longer, because we broke Roe v. Wade, and we did something that nobody thought was possible. We gave it back to the states, and the states are working very brilliantly, in some cases conservative, in some cases not conservative, but they're working, and it's uh, working the way it's supposed to. Every legal scholar, real legal scholar, wanted to have it go back to the states, Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative. And we're able to do that. You know, what we did was give it back to the states. And now the states are working their way through it. And you're going, you're having some very, very beautiful harmony, to be honest with you. You have, well, you have some cases like Arizona that went back to like 1864 or something like that. And a judge made a ruling. But that's going to be changed by government. They're going to be changing that. I disagree with that. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, please. A follow-up. Over, over the last few decades, Mr. President, you have both considered yourself pro-choice and pro-life. Which one is it? Well, you know exactly which one it is. And when I was in New York and when I was a Democrat also, just like Ronald Reagan. You know, Ronald Reagan was a Democrat. We sort of followed a very similar path. But if you look at what we've done with Roe v. Wade, we did something that everyone said couldn't be done, and we got it done. And I give great credit to the Supreme Court and the, the justices for having the courage to do it. What they did is very simply give it back to the state. And I'll tell you, the Democrats are the radicals on this because they're willing to have abortions in the seventh, eighth, ninth month. They're even willing, and you can call it what you want, but you go back to the governor of Virginia, the previous governor of Virginia, the Democrat governor of Virginia, where he talked about execution of a baby after birth. And you can say what you want, but that's extreme and that's radical and nobody should have that. And it has to be ended. Please go ahead. Go ahead, please. Well, it's unfortunate that people bring it up because right now we have much bigger problems. The country is a we're a nation in decline. We're a declining nation. We have tremendous inflation. The inflation's coming back at levels that nobody thought they really would have. Uh, if you look at the categories of inflation, they have the worst categories. Many categories are not included. And if you included that, your inflation number would be substantially higher than it is now. And it's already at records. So inflation is back. And a lot of bad things are happening in our country, but that's the least of it. You've got Russia could end up in, you could end up in a world war between Russia, Ukraine, and all of the chaos. And that's something should have never happened. It would have never happened. What's going on with Israel, October 7th, and what's going on with Israel could end up in a world war. We have a president that can't put two sentences together. We have a president that can't find the stairs off a stage. We have a president that doesn't know what the hell he's doing. And we could end up in a world war. You know, we have just a little bit less than seven months now, months before November 5th. But that's an eternity when people are incompetent. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Which one? 
Well, I'm not a big fan of Pfizer. I looked at it and I studied it and I know it probably better than anybody. You know, they spied on my campaign. You do know that, right? And they did lots of other bad things. I'm not a big fan of Pfizer, but I told everybody, I said, do what you want. They put a lot of checks and balances on, and I guess it's uh, down to two years now so that it would come due in the early part of my administration on the, uh, on the basis that we live up to the polls, because all the polls, we just had another one come out. We're leading by a lot, but it comes out quickly. I said, you do what you want, but I'm not a big fan of Pfizer. I think it's terrible. Yeah, Bob? <laughs> Yeah, I would testify. Absolutely. It's a scam. It's a scam. That's not a trail. That's not a trail. That's a scam. If you read Jonathan Turley, if you read Andy McCarthy, if you le read the legal, they said there's not even a case there. That's election interference by the Biden administration. They actually took their top guy, one of their top guys, put him into the DA's office to run it. And it's a shame. What they have done is incredible. It's election interference, and it's got to stop. It's a third world country. This country's never done it. But you read Jonathan Turley, you read Andrew McCarthy, you read the legal scholars. Every single one of them said that whole thing is a scam. It's not even a crime. And what they're doing is a crime. They are criminals. All right, Bob. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, jury selection is largely luck. It depends who you get. It's very unfair that I'm having a trial there. It's very unfair that we have this judge who hates Trump and has tremendous conflict, as you know, tremendous conflict. Nobody can believe that this judge isn't recusing himself. The conflict is at a level that nobody's ever seen before. So I have that and I have venue. We have all these things that we've asked for. They don't give us anything. It's a witch hunt that takes place in New York and that is taking place. And it's very bad for New York and it's very bad and it's very bad for the judicial system in New York. I don't know. I'm testifying. I tell the truth. I mean, all I can do is tell the truth. And the truth is that there's no case. They have no case. And again, you have to read the scholars, read all of the legal scholars. I haven't seen one legal scholar that said this is a case. And in fact, even you people said, oh, gee, that's too bad. This is the first one. All of them are scams. They're all about election interference. We have a, we have a president that doesn't know where he is. He can't speak. The whole world is collapsing. The world is on fire. They have no respect for our country anymore. And the only way he thinks he can win is by doing this, you know, trials of Trump. We have Fawny in Atlanta, who's been so discredited now. That was a setup with her boyfriend so they could take trips and take a lot of money out. And that's something that should be dismissed. Not just the prosecutor dismissed, the case should be dismissed. Every single one of them said, look at what happened with Biden. He gets off scot-free with 50 years of documents and classified information. He gets off scot-free. And I'm still fighting that trial. Uh, the whole thing is a disgrace, and it's a disgrace to our nation. <laughs> Yeah. Um, have you spoken with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu? Yeah. How should the United States respond in I don't want to say who I spoke to, but for the president of our country to actually put out a warning that he thinks that we're going to be attacked or they're going to be attacked, that's pretty pathetic. They wouldn't be attacking Israel if I were president, that I can tell you. And they never did. They wouldn't be attacking. Iran was in no position to attack. They had no money. They were broke. But now they have $221 billion, and they have Iraq, who has $300 billion. And Iraq has become a subsidiary of Iran. With all that we've done, with all of the fighting, all of the death, look at what happened, how incompetent the whole thing is. But I don't want to say who I spoke to, but I think it's a very, very dangerous period. This is a very dangerous period of time in our nation. And a big reason that it's dangerous that we have a president that's grossly incompetent. Thank you all very much. Thank you.
There you have it, uh, Speaker Johnson and President Trump uh, exiting there from the uh, living room there at Mar-a-Lago. Uh, addressing uh, election integrity, and he started off talking about the border, the open border, and the uh, the migrant crime coming across his border, but also touched upon uh, the likelihood of uh, illegal votes coming in uh, in this next election, and, and really briefly talking about the importance of of um, this election in terms of uh, the presidency and to make sure that uh, we can, uh, the American people's vote uh, counts and there's no discrepancies in that. And then at the conclusion of that press conference, as I very well thought would happen, is that one of the first questions was, do you support the motion to vacate uh, from Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene in regards to uh, Speaker Johnson and uh, Trump responding with, uh, that he had uh, utmost respect for both Speaker Johnson and uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, called her a friend and, and someone that he likes and respects. And so I thought that was a moment there uh, that he, in, in a way, uh, put a little bit of support, uh, I think, uh, th to Speaker Johnson. And then, of course, questions from the media also in regards to uh, uh, Ukraine, uh, funding Ukraine, also, in regards to um, uh, the border, abortion, like all of these uh, issues that we knew that the media was really going to uh, pressure uh, both Speaker Johnson and President Trump to respond to. And I think they, they did uh, just that. Uh, we want to thank our partners of, the, of today's broadcast, the Birch Gold Group. If you want to uh, get more information on investing in gold, silver, and precious metals, simply text the words TRUMP to 989898 get that free information gold kit uh, they are backed by the better business bureau and the a plus from that as well so go check it out our friends at the birch gold group also go to our website sign up for our newsletter rsbnetwork.com that's rsbnetwork.com sign up for our newsletter uh it's real easy to do we don't have to you don't we won't sell your information to china it's very safe and secure there couple uh at some bit of information for you and we'll get those newsletters uh to your inbox as news develops and it's been a very busy news week uh as it always is here in washington also while you're at the website uh, why not donate that's we've got some great partners like the birch go group and many more but our biggest partner in our success is actually you So took questions in regards to the court case in New York uh, that he would be willing to testify. He will be in court on uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday is what's required by the judge. Uh, we'll have live coverage there in New York on Monday in front of the courthouse. And also, if any remarks from President Trump takes place at Trump Tower or wherever the case may be, we'll be there. Uh, Vanessa Broussard and myself will be on the ground there in New York. And as always, go follow us on all of our social media platforms. You can follow me at Brian on True Social, at Brian Glenn TV on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. And as always, we appreciate your engagement on this Friday night. Drop some comments in the Rumble comment section. I heard it's on fire right now, and I'm going to go back and read some of these when we get off the air. I've had a couple people screenshot uh, some stuff on it. So uh, let us know how you feel about tonight's uh, announcement at Mar a Lago and all the other subjects that were covered. And as always, we appreciate your time and your donations, and your attention. So live from uh, Washington, D.C., we'll see you back here tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Goodbye, and God bless. What's up, guys? My name is Jaden Hurd, and I have a Christian show called Let It Be Heard, where we analyze culture and current events from a biblical perspective. I highly recommend you guys check us out. We now have episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And basically, what happens is we react to videos, we have talking points, we have on guests, and it's very exciting. Come check us out on Rumble on the RSBN channel. God bless you guys.
I'm excited to announce we're having a huge MyPillow spring sale. And here's a few examples. Buy one of our MyPillow 2.0s, you get another MyPillow 2.0 absolutely free. Made with cooling technology, the best pillow ever just got even better. And this just in, nine brand new colors and styles of our Percale bed sheets. They're made with the finest long staple cotton, and now you can save 50% or more. That's as low as $24.98. And for the first time this year, I'm bringing you our My Slippers and Sandals for as low as $25 a pair. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen, use your promo code to get your MyPillow 2.0s, buy one, get one free. Percale sheets as low as $24.98. My slippers and sandals as low as $25 a pair. And for a limited time, when you order $75 or more, your entire order ships absolutely free. Welcome to the Right Side Broadcasting Network. We're not like the other media outlets out there that cut and edit what other people say. In 2015, we were created by our founder, Joe Seals, to cover President Donald J. Trump's speeches and rallies, to which we continue to do to this day. We've also covered important conservative events like CPAC, TPUSA, March for Life, and many other important events and hearings around the country. We were made for people like you, everyday Americans who are tired of the mainstream media, who are tired of being lied to, manipulated, and fed an agenda. Our goal here at Right Side Broadcasting is to allow you to see the truth, giving our correspondents and commentators a wide latitude to speak their minds. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media, your support through your donations, locals, and supporting our advertisers allows us to continue to cover important events around the country each and every day. So, from us here at Right Side Broadcasting, thank you for supporting us and the right side of history.